Thank you for listening in on Colors of Politics in Rhode Island. And also don't forget, you can find us on Twitter at Colors of RI. We're going to talk about some real basics for voting in Rhode Island and how we should go about it if you haven't already participated. The good news is Rhode Island now lets you register to vote online. So if you haven't already done it before, you're just now getting into the realm you know, Rhode Island politics are pissing you off just enough to choose to vote now and make your voice heard, you can do it with vote.sos.ri.gov. And you can do it right there, and you'll get a voter ID card in the mail. So, of course, you can still go to your board of canvassers. So, with that, your voter ID card would be the only thing that you're required to have when you go to register to vote or you can bring your license. And wonder what district you're in. Who's your rep? What are you going to do? And what exactly are you voting for? Well, you can find all of that on the Secretary of State website also. But we're going to go over what are some of those names that you're looking out for and what district. So some of the interesting ones is in District 13, there was six different people that filed candidacy for running in that district. Two of them withdrew, and one did not qualify. So now you have three people to check out. We have DeFilippo, we have Perez, and Scorpio, all of which being Democrats. So you'll have a primary on September 13th for District 13. And did somebody piss, get really pissed off about Eileen Norton in District 21? Because there is seven different people that submitted candidacy papers for that district. And one of them didn't submit signatures. But you have six different choices up there. You have two independents, three Democrats, and one Republican. The names to look out for are... Nutton, Cruzona, Naughton, Penta, Underwood, and Wilkinson. And if I murdered anybody's name, I apologize. But there are so many seats unopposed. We have District 17, District 23, District 30, all of these districts unopposed. So anybody out there, check out who's running. Check out what's going on in your area. Who are these people? What do they stand for? Why should you vote? And let us know if you want to know more about them. Tweet to Colors of RI and let us know that you want us to ask them some questions. You want to know more information. You want to get the scoop on your options. How about in District 43? You have a Democrat and an Independent. Falana and Gorman are your two options out there. There's not a Republican running for that area. But then in District 45, you have one of each. You have a Democrat, a Republican, and an Independent. Between, in that order, Ackerman, Rossi, and Satoro. So, again, there's a lot of great options and lots going on in your area. So please take the time to check it out. Make your voice heard and make sure you can stand up and vote for who you want to represent what you like within the state of Rhode Island. District 69, here's another one. Five people running, and guess what? We have a libertarian running in that district. One of three districts that have a libertarian running, and your options are Avila, Barreto, Donovan, Gurix, and Hall, all for District 69. The other two districts are District 67 and District 68, also having Libertarian options against Democrats without any Republicans running in either 67 or 69. But then you have 62, nobody running, just the incumbent alone, seat unopposed, and same with 42 and 37. But then we have 35 down in southern Rhode Island. And you have two Democrats. So you'll have a primary running against an independent with 
Dickinson and Fogarty as your Democrats and Wadler as your independent. That's down in the South County, South Kingstown area. And then two independents for District 36, but one of them did withdraw. So our incumbent, Blake Filippi, is running unopposed in District 36. So again, go to sos.ri.gov, determine your district, register to vote, or change your voter affiliation. You can go to unaffiliated, or you can pick to be affiliated to a party. And if you're not registered yet, it's vote.sos.ri.gov. And I printed out for you one particular bill that I thought you'd be interested in knowing about. And it's things like this that we should pay attention to in Rhode Island and part of what we will be paying attention to on Colors of Politics in RI, where there's certain bills that we should be noting for our protection and our family's protection. And a bill that was held in committee, H7635 was the number, and it is relating to business and profession of pharmacies. The summary of what this bill does is it says that a pharmacy can from this point forward administer any and all vaccines available which, in a quick summary, sounds like that could be a great convenience. But what that really means is that all pharmacies will then have all sign-in capabilities to our KidsNet software. What that software is, is it holds the database of all of your children's vaccination records, things like lead tests and other pertinent personal information. And in order to administer the regular vaccine schedule and all of those vaccines, you have to have access to the database, which means all Rhode Island pharmacies would suddenly have all of their pharmacists and whoever their pharmacy techs that have permission would get access to this database and all of your personal information. Also, they're not doctors and certain vaccines do have allergy components. They have some reactions that should be noted and followed. Any of this is all relevant to a doctor. And what are you going to do if now it's all accessible through the pharmacy? And now your medical records aren't coinciding. They're not complete. They now have access to a database. All of this information that to me doesn't sound like it's great but you might think that's a good thing for you but it is something that we need to know about and we need to be aware of these kinds of things so again let us know on twitter colors of ri or on facebook search for us colors of politics on ri free radio let us know what you want to hear about what kind of bills did you caught your mind what is it that you, that your person that represents your district thinks of all of this? So this particular bill I'm discussing right now was sponsored by Representative Serpa. It was introduced last February. Again, it was held in committee, so this isn't going anywhere, and we don't have pharmacies getting that access. Thank goodness. But if it comes back next year, they could. So keep an eye out for things. How about we have a Senate bill it's number 2221 that there was an amendment that did pass. The bill itself did not. And this is about grandparent rights. And this is saying that grandparents are very essential to their gr grandchildren's lives, which nobody could argue that. But this bill, originally as written, would give grandparents the right to go to court and say that they can see their children even if the parents say they cannot. Is that something you agree with? Do you think they should have that right just because they have the DNA? Or should the parents trump and the parents be able to say whether they can or cannot? So again, lots of things going on behind the scenes that can affect your personal life and your family. Do you know what they are? And do you want to know what they are? So let us know what you want us to check into so we can find these out for you.
So let's go back to some more of what's going on in your district and who should you look out for. Representative District 5, we have Desimone, Lavalley, and Wranglin Vassell. You have three options in that district, and those names in order are Democrat, Republican, Democrat. <coughs> so you will have a primary again on September 13th. And if you did not already register to vote, you will not make the voting registration in time for the primary, but you can register now and still vote in the general election. In Rhode Island, the rules state that you must be registered 30 days prior to a primary or a general election when you intend on voting. So you wouldn't have made that deadline for our primary coming up soon. But another district that is very much in the hot spot of talking is District 15 Cranston with the Speaker of the House, Nicholas Mattiello, who has three people running against him, two of which are Republicans and one independent. And there is a lot of talk about these Republicans, which are Stephen Frias and Shauna Lawton, and Frias is sponsored or endorsed by the Republican Party. Shauna is not. And there has been lots of discussion on how the party fully and totally supports Frias for the position. And they feel that he is the most qualified. And Shauna, of course, why would she run if she didn't feel she was the most qualified? So we have two very strong Republican options along with an independent Patrick Valier and he is also running against Mattiello but there will not be a primary because there is not another Democrat in that district. District 7 had a Republican withdraw. Brian Hutchings chose not to follow through with his candidacy papers but we do have Daniel McKiernan and Grant Van Eck, an independent, running in that district. So those are your options in District 7. So who's in what district, and what is this all about? Well, an easy way to find it is by going to the Secretary of State's website and selecting the elections link. You can get a nice, pretty, colorful map where it will show you which district numbers and where they align. Unfortunately, it's not an easy District 1 is Providence and District 2 is East Providence. The lines are blurry and they don't go exactly town by town. But the map does give you a nice, well-presented line of where you are and where you need to be. Looking and who you're paying attention to. So... Representative Serpa, that sponsored the bill I was just discussing with the pharmacies of the vaccines, she has two opponents in her district, and she is District 27. And she has another Democrat opponent, so she will be in a primary against Delmenico, and then we have an independent of Borget. Again, three people in Serpa's district. So do you maybe you totally support that pharmacy bill and other things that she's put through so if you really like what she's done be sure to get out there and make sure she gets back in but if you really don't like what she's done or what the representative in your area is make sure to get out there and vote somebody else in speak your mind and make sure that your vote shows what you feel and let us know what it is Again, this is Colors of Politics on RI Free Radio, and you can find us on Twitter at Colors of RI and let us know what you want us to go out there and dig up and find. We can talk bills, we can talk people, and we can interview. We'd love to be doing it based on what you want us to find. How about District 72 with Linda Dill Finn and her primary opponent, James Cowley? But they have a very strong Republican opponent, Kenneth Mendonca. I think I murdered that name. Um, <laughs> but they, he, um, 
he got a lot of signatures submitted according to the Secretary of State website. So he's serious about coming in. So there's the two Democrats for that primary. And then District 75, we have Lauren Carson going against independent Michael Warren Smith. So Democrat versus independent in that race. We have lots of independents throughout the state this year. And those are all your representatives. We also have the Senate side. We have s approximately 74 representatives and approximately 38 senators, which the senator's area is about double what a representative's area is. And in the Secretary of State website, you can see all of these names, and you can also see exactly how many signatures that they put the effort into getting in. So for the Democrat, I mean, yes, the Democrat, but the Senator Democrat, District 6, for instance, they're only required to have 100 signatures, but we have Harold Metz that submitted over 300 signatures to be sure to be on that ballot and that option. And that district actually had five different people submit candidacy papers, but three of which decided to follow through, two Democrats and one independent. Your other options in District 6 for Senator are Jonathan Hernandez and Russell Rizan. Russell is your independent option. And then we have District 3 with Gail Golden with no opposition. Nobody running against her, but yet Gail still chose to submit over 200 qualified signatures when she only was required to have 100. And then District 5, we have Brian Hutchings running against Paul Javor. And District 1 with Camerino versus Goodwin. So again, the Secretary, Web, uh, Secretary of State website is where I'm reading all of this information from. And it's great for you to look at. Take a look, scroll through it, see all these options and all of these names. It's exactly what you need to vote and to vote according to what your values are, what it is that you want somebody to stand for. And I know everybody's paying so much attention to the presidential election. What's going on? Who's doing what? What did Trump say? What did Clinton say? Is Johnson polling enough yet? But really, your biggest impact is in your local area because those votes affect your daily lives. Those votes affect what happens right here, right at home, in your life, in your family, on your street, in your neighborhood. So a Senate District 17, here's um, another one with six people that submitted candidacy papers. So we have some districts that have no opponents. 14 and 15, nobody running against them. Nestle Bush and DePonte, they'll be right back in the state house because nobody's opposing. But then 17 th district. We have six people, five of which qualified to move forward, three de four Democrats, and one Republican. So that's going to be an interesting primary in that district. Again, this is Colors of Politics with your host, Amy G., and you can find us on Twitter at Colors of RI. And right now we're going over the Secretary of State list of who's running in which district What's going on and how should you do it? If you missed before, if you haven't already registered to vote in Rhode Island, you can now do that online, vote.sos.ri.gov, and you will get a voter ID card, and that card does count as your ID when you go to vote, so you are not required to bring a license if you have that card, or you can bring a license if you don't have that card. And you have, if you have not registered to vote yet, do so now. You have already missed the deadline to vote in the primary, but you have not missed the deadline to vote in a general election. So, again, Senate districts. We're talking some names here. So how about District 28? Josh Miller. 
He's an interesting character up at the State House, and lots of people have different points of view on his perspectives and what he does and doesn't vote for up there. Well, he had an independent running against him, but unfortunately, she did not submit enough signatures to go forward. So she has now no longer qualified. So Josh Miller will be getting the seat in District 28 for that Senate district. And then we have... District 38, District 36, also unopposed. That's Dennis Algier from Westerly and James Sheehan in District 36. And Elaine Morgan is in District 34 from the Hope Valley area with Richmond and parts of Exeter. And she is a Republican who has actually voted in the top of the Rhode Island Center for Freedom and Prosperity voting database for her record at the state house is one of the top representatives and senators in the state of rhode island and her opponent is a democrat of last name of rumsey and both of which submitted well over 200 signatures in order to compete in this race so they're both serious candidates and then we have district 35 with Mark Gee as a Republican who also submitted well more than needed signatures, who did have Paul Martin running as a Democrat against him, but Paul decided not to follow through. So Mark will be getting the seat in District 35. So again, this is your host, Amy G with Colors of Politics in RI, and we're just going over who should you look for, what are these names, and what districts is it? In Representative District 39, we have Justin Price, who is our current representative at the State House, and his challenger is Larry Valencia. And they just the two of them in that district, Justin Republican, Valencia Democrat, in Richmond and Exeter, and I think a uh, piece of the Hopkinton area might be included for that area also. And then Chippendale, Mike Chippendale, also a Republican currently in office. He has a Democrat running. Cardalillo is his challenger. And just the two of them in District 40. District 44, unopposed. District 42, unopposed. District 37, unopposed. So again, in order to make real change in the state, if you really don't like something, somebody has to step up in that area. We have 55, 56, 57. All three of those representative districts are going unopposed again. They're not going to have to worry about going out and beating out somebody else because they will get the seat without being challenged. Brian Newberry, a Republican in District 48, he's also unopposed. Robert Phillips, District 51, unopposed. But the good thing that is in here this year is how many independents, and we even have the libertarians in addition to the Democrats and the Republicans. We have a wide range of people with different views and different options. So make sure to check into who your options are this year. Have you seen for District 2 of our Congress Right now, Jim Langevin has the seat, and we have two independents and two Democrats and a Republican running for that Congress District 2, trying to take out Jim Langevin. And so check out his voting record. Check out what he's doing at our federal level. Do you want him to keep representing you, or do you want somebody new? Do you like what he's done? If so, go ahead. Go vote for him. Make sure to keep the ones you do like, and make sure to vote out the ones you don't. That's how we can always make our voices heard. It's the only way we can. Our elected officials are there because that's exactly what we do. We elected them into office. Make sure to hold them accountable. Do you have their email? Do you have their phone number? We can help you figure it out if you don't know, but the Secretary of State website will also help you figure it out. Again, you're listening to Colors of Politics on RI Free Radio, and this is your host, Amy G. 
and today we're discussing the Secretary of State listing for who's voting in what district, not who's voting, who's running <laughs> in what district, and who are you supposed to look out for, and how do you know what you're doing when you're going to vote? You also, your voter registration card, when you get it in the mail after voting, it will tell you your district number. It will tell you your polling location. It will uh, also give you the information for your canvasser's office. Feel free to call, ask questions, get involved. Get uh, the teens, especially the juniors and seniors in high school, let them know what you're doing and how you're doing it and why you're doing it because they will soon be out in the public eye themselves and they will have a voice and they will be able to make that choice. So show them the ropes and let them know how to go about that. Again, going back to the senator listing, in District 37, which includes Block Island, we have two. We have the Democrat that's been there for a while now, Susan Sosnowski. She has a opponent of an independent of Sven Soderberg. And Susan's been up at the State House for a while now. So she is being challenged by an independent, and that covers South Kingstown and Block Island and possibly a piece of Narragansett, too. So if you're in that area, take a look at who your options are. And take a look at the bills again today. We talked about 7635 put in by SERPA for our vaccine options at the pharmacies. And do you really want them to have the access to all that database? And 2221 and your grandparent rights and who should matter more, the DNA of that line or what the parent says and whether or not you can or cannot see which children, when and where. You're listening to Colors of Politics on RI Free Radio. This is Amy G. And be sure to connect with us on Twitter, too, at Colors of RI. Find us on Facebook at Colors of Politics on RI Free Radio. And today we discussed the Secretary of State listing of who's running in what districts. Are you not registered to vote yet? Go out and do so. Vote.sos.ri. Gov. And when you get your voter registration in the mail, get all the details you need and bring it with you. You've missed the deadline for the primary voting, which is the 13th, but you have not missed the deadline for the General Assembly voting, which will be November 8th. So be sure to get, vote, get registered to vote if you have not already. You can also change your voter registration you can go unaffiliated, you can pick your Democrat or Republican party, and you can change between them. Make sure that you're looking at all the information for your local, because your local makes way more of a difference than the presidential as far as what impacts your everyday life. So what's happening in your town? I um, would be way too much if we tried to go over the list for the districts that also included your town council and your school committee, but you get to vote those also. So who's doing what, where, and how, and does it align with what you want? Take a look, participate, and be a part of what's happening in your town, in your state. And of course the president matters too, but these votes make a difference in your everyday lives for your family. Colors of Politics in RI and on Twitter at Colors of RI. This is Amy G. And again, vote online in Rhode Island or register to vote online. With our new electronic voting happening this year, we'll have an interesting new voting booths. But get out there, vote.sos.ri.gov. And you can get your voter registration card in the mail. And ag again, that is your ID at the polls. That's your only requirement. But if you don't have it, make sure to bring your ID. So one last look at an interesting point for the senator rule is, excuse me, 
District 33 with Lou Raptakis, who has been very involved at the State House with lots of different bills, is, has an independent running against him with Copley. Go look. That's partially Coventry and I think surrounding West Warwick too. District 33. Go take a look on the sos.ri.gov if you're in that area and take a look at what Raptakis has done. If you like it, get him back in. If you don't, vote the independent against him. We've got a great, great list of people voting, uh, sorry, again, running <laughs> in Rhode Island. And we have lots of great people that are at the State House too. It's up to you. Do you like what they're doing? Do you not like what they're doing? We'd love to interview some. So if you're listening and you are a candidate, contact us. Let us know. Let's interview. And if you're not and you want to hear from your rep, let us know that too. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Colors of Politics in our eyes. <laughs>